Hello. Um, I'm Marla Grant. I'm clearly not used to wearing a mic, so I apologize for that. Um, and I'm a visiting assistant professor um, of psychology and gender, sexuality, women's studies. And I'm going to talk to you about the case of the Lady Jim. So this was an assignment that I used um, in Psychology 245, which is Psychology of Gender Roles. So it was my first term at Union, and it was the second week of the term. So I didn't know students. Students didn't know me. And so I figured, why not try to do something to kind of build some sense of community and some sense of engagement with students? I also wanted to do that using research, particularly an approach to research that students, I quickly learned, had never heard of. Um, and so it was sort of a, a way to introduce them to, to research and maybe a different lens as connected to gender. So what students were asked to do is they were asked to take 10 photos um, on or near Union's campus that related to gender and to put a title, so a short, so a few words, title, and a one to 200 word caption with each of these photos. This is related to a research methods call, method called photo voice. So it's a qualitative research method um, that comes out of sort of social work and psychology and some related fields. And the basic idea of it is, first of all, you collect two types of data. So the first thing that you collect, um, and you're collecting them together, to be clear, um, you're collecting um, photographs, again, related to the prompt that I gave them, and then you're also putting together text. In this case, again, the title and the one to 200 word captions. You then begin analyzing um, both the text and the captions. So essentially you're looking for sort of themes and similarities or differences in content. This is an iterative process, so you're doing all of this sort of alongside one another, um, back and forth. Um, eventually, you're triangulating data. So at this point, really what, um, what you're doing is you're looking to see um, how these two types of data converge. So are there some kinds of patterns that emerge? Um, eventually, what you end up with is a set of sort of big picture themes and big picture patterns that emerge across both types of data. So that's sort of how photo voice would work more broadly. So in the context of the class, students, again, they had taken the photos, they'd done the titles, and they'd come up with the captions prior to coming to class. They came to class, and the first thing that we did, similar to how photo voice would work, you'd work with the community to come up with a research question. This was what we did um, in our classroom community. So we came up with this research question. How does sex and gender um, shape daily life for students at Union College and within the surrounding community? So really photos at Union for the most part, and then some in and around Schenectady. We started off um, just by breaking students. I broke students into small groups, three or four. There were 25 total students in the course, so there were several of these small groups. Again, each student had taken 10 photos. So just in this context, there were 30 to 40 um, sets of photos and captions to discuss. At this point, it was just them sharing with one another um, what they'd found. Then some of these groups were merged. So now we had groups of seven or eight. At this point, I told students to start to really look for themes, look for patterns, like were there similar photos represented? Um, were there similar um, sort of captions or text to accompany these photos? And I had them write that on the whiteboard. Then we came back together as a group of 25. And so at this point, um, we started to talk through the, the different themes that the groups had written on the board and really talk about, you know, what are the patterns at this point? 25 students, 10 photos, where we have 250 photos, captions, titles, et cetera. And we started to look at some of the, the themes that emerged there. And then what that really facilitated, um, as I'll talk about in a minute, is a discussion about androcentrism in research and how bias shapes the ways that we produce and consume research. So these are some of the photos, the 250 photos that students shared. And I'm actually going to step down for just a moment, just so you can see some of these. Okay, so I think you'll see enough, at least. Um, so, as you may notice, some of these were photos that match gender in ways that you would expect. So you see a tampon machine over here, uh, gender neutral restroom signs. Some of these photos aren't necessarily things that you would think about. I had over, I think, 21 photos um, that look kind of like the photo, actually it's a little covered up right now, but it was a student interacting with a dog. And there was this theme that students noticed that whenever you interact with a dog, you see a dog, you say, oh, what's his name? Right, we automatically assign he, him pronouns to dogs um, or conversations like the, the skeleton here, which actually ties nicely to some of what was discussed earlier. But the theme that came out the most 
was, um, was a theme related to this particular space. So this is a space on Union's campus. Um, it's the, the women's workout room, and this is the sign that's on the door. Um, so women and gender non-conforming individuals only. As you enter the space, you see things like this. So there are a few things that I would just sort of draw your attention to. I would say pay attention to the type of equipment that you're seeing here. You'll notice there's a fair amount of cardio equipment um, and a lot of open space with yoga mats and um, sort of stretching things and Pilates and, and these kinds of, of equipment. Um, also pay attention to what's on the walls. So colors, design, just sort of the general aesthetic that we're working with here. The other portion, and it's worth noting, this is a smaller portion of this space, looks like this. Right? So there are some weights in the space. Um, you may or may not be able to read some of the numbers here. Um, the dumbbells, the heaviest ones in this space are 25 pounds. Um, the plates over here, the heaviest ones are 45 pounds, and there aren't very many of these 45 pound weights. So these are the types of things that students were picking up on in these photos. Again, photos also, there were captions with these. So I'm going to show you just some snippets of some of the different perspectives here. Pay attention to some of the words like I, we, them, and some of these other subjective words. So as a guy, I'm just going to read you some of them. Um, as a guy, I think it's better they can go there instead. I don't have to worry about making them uncomfortable. I hate the pink flowers <clears throat> with much enthusiasm in the all caps. Um, it makes it feel like a kid's space. It's not like they have airplanes and cars in the boys' gym. Um, these were, again, student quotes. Some of these were great things they shared. Um, it's nice for them, referencing women, um, to have a space they can work out and be themselves. And then, so, instead of tackling or combating sexism, we're just avoiding it altogether, um, which I thought was a really compelling point made by a student. So, what happened with all of this? Right After we looked at the photos and talked about the captions, where did we end up? Well, first of all, what happened is students had to observe with purpose. If you go back and think about those photos, dogs, there are dogs all over Union's campus, right? We interact with dogs, we don't think of this. Um, flyers on campus, we don't really think of these things. So they had to observe them with purpose. They had to think about um, how they could use their text and how they could use their photos to communicate some of what they had observed, as well as the communication that was happening in class and the, the various group sizes about this. And they had to think critically about gender around them. Again, these things that they didn't associate with gender and that we just kind of assume happen, they had to think more critically about those. So ultimately, what did students pull from this? Well, ultimately, students discovered they're researchers because at the core, what they were doing through this project was research. They were doing research that they didn't maybe consider research. It was much different than the other research that they had seen. But they realized that they were doing research. They also realize that they interact with gender bias all the time in, again, the things that we see and things like the sign to the gym um, and a handful of other uh, visuals they captured. And they confronted the reality that gender is not exempt from gender bias. So just like you saw with those quotes, students had, in some cases, very different perspectives on the same physical space on campus. And so it got at this idea that there is subjectivity in sort of how we approach research based on our own gender identity, our own sexuality, our own um, any other identities that we hold. Um, and so students were able to walk away with this awareness of how research can be biased and hopefully approach that in other classes that don't have the word gender in the title where research is discussed, as well as professional spaces and, and the other places they might find themselves.